What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of the Road to Glory. I was going to do this one um, live, I've, I've edited and chopped it up, but there, there's so many parts of it that um, were just out of context massively because the conversation's jumping because I'm in a, uh, like a Discord chat with some of the boys, so there was conversations here, there and everywhere, people popping in and out all the time, and uh, after I edited edited it to a, like a two hour video I kind of like started watching it back and I was just like people are just going to get so confused with where the conversation jumps to um, so I ended up just chopping out the uh, the good bits and showing it so basically um, I started I was 23 and 7 um, on uh, on um, foot champs and I decided to play some games on live stream I haven't live streamed any games before so I thought let me uh, let me live stream some of my games all I wanted to do was get to gold one that was where I was going to aim so to, I had to win two games in 10 to get to gold one, um, and, and I was going to plan to get up to 28 wins. Uh, the reason why I decided to do on stream for the first time is because there was basically no pressure for me to win two in 10. You know, if I ended up did go losing on a, if I ended up going on like a three or four loss streak, I would have just stopped streaming and then focused outside of the stream. Interestingly enough, as you guys know by the title in the previous video, we actually finished Elite, uh, Elite 2 uh, by any means. So we actually finished on 32 wins, which means we won 9 of our 10 games on stream. And there were some tough games in there. And um, there were some games where David De Gea literally single-handedly saved me. He was absolutely spectacular. I know I say absolutely spectacular a fair old amount, but yeah, David De Gea was, uh, was on one. Um, of course, today uh, or yesterday, by the time you're watching this, Team of the Year has been announced and been released. Some uh, some shocks for some people. The full team is, of course, Luis Suarez, uh, Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Kroos, Modric, and Iniesta in midfield. Um, Dani Alves, Ramos, PK, and uh, uh, Marcelo at left back, and Manuel Neuer in nets. And what a team it'll be! And for for a change, EA released the attackers first. I guess like a kind of a for, for money, basically, you know. Um, they don't want people to be playing foot champs and trying to open packs at the same time. It's not a, not, a, not a viable way to do things. So I guess they've released the attackers out, get everyone to spend all their money, blow all their cash, go blow all their feed points, and then when uh, rewards come out on Wednesday, it's going to be the midfields in packs. So people are probably less inclined to uh, hold on to their rewards for the attackers and, and more inclined to spend money on the attackers. So very smart move from EA. But... Um, yeah, I'm, I've played with both. With both, I've played with all three uh, uh, blue attackers so far: Ronaldo, Messi, and Suarez. And Ronaldo is just next level good, and I, I literally mean next level good. Uh, there was a fair few of him on the market earlier on, um, but since then, uh, hello. Uh, since then, let me check my camera's still running. There we go. Since then, his uh, his price has kind of gone up a little bit. Uh, there's not that many of him on the market now. He's six million coins right now. Six million coins. That's just. I mean, we've got 1.6 million coins. We've got a few, you know, a little bit of assets. We could probably get up to two million coins right now. We've got some stuff on the way, you know, a, a, an inform pack, three informs, a 100k pack, 100,000 coins. So give or take, we could be at like 240. Uh, sorry, 2.4 to 2.5 million. We're a ways, way, way away off of Ronaldo. And you know what I was thinking when I saw these prices? Because I honestly thought, I thought if Ronaldo was a striker, he'd be about four to six million. I thought if he was a left wing, I thought it'd be like three, three million or so, three to three point five million. And he may well go down and settle at that price. You know, this is day one. Uh, they've only been out in packs for six hours. There's still a whole couple more days of um, the attackers being in packs. They'll come back again on the weekend. There's going to be loads of lightning rounds, loads of good stuff. You know, there's there's going to be a lot of Ronaldos on the market, so he may well come down. But I could only I, I could only sit there and think to myself, God damn. Think of all those coins that I've wasted and all those SBCs now. What, like, I'm, I'm genuinely gutted. Genuinely gutted that I did, even even going back to basics, Jonas. I think Jonas was a good one to get. And, and I kind of stand by the point because it was one of those ones where you build the teams, you get packs back. But I probably spent 150,000 coins on Jonas. I would love that 150,000 coins now. I think back to that uh, the, the times that we bought and sold Sergio Ramos and we've lost about 100k altogether on depreciation and tax. I would love that 100k right now. Um, you know, there are so many players that I've done SBCs for that I'm not using right now. And more, more, not even the ones that I'm not using because some of them I've used a lot and they're worth the money. For example, Raheem Sterling. I don't really play with him much anymore. He doesn't start anymore because of Theo Walcott. But I'm happy I did uh, Sterling. I feel like I got my money's worth out of him. 
Um, he, he was instrumental for us in our, uh, you know, our approach to uh, foot champs. He, he, was, he played a big part in a lot of weekends for us. You know, he's played over 400 games for the club. He was worth every coin. But there are so many players that I did that, like Gamero and De Rossi and um, Insigne, just, that's probably like 300,000 coins straight away that I'm, I'm there. I'm never going to see those coins again. I'm never really going to use those players. Um, so I, I, I did think back to that and think, yeah, I was a little bit gutted that I didn't... Uh, I didn't be more careful with my coins, but all that means for me going forwards, guys, because Messi right now is 3.4 million, and Suarez, who's probably the main one that I want, is 3.9 million. We're not far off of them. I know it seems like we're quite far off of them because I've only got 1.6 million or 1.7 million in the bank. I've got about 200k in investments sat on the trade pile. I've got, again, you know, a few hundred thousand. If, if I sold up what I needed to sell up, I could easily get about 2.5 million. So we're about a million and a half away from Suarez. If he does go down in value, down to say 3.2, 3.3 million, we're 800k away. That's about, a, you know, maybe three or four good weekend leagues for me to be able to make that sort of money. Um, so there's hope for us to get these players, but I think we'd more be looking towards getting Modric, Cruz, not really interested in Iniesta, Ramos, Marcelo. Um, basically, my idea now for the team going forwards is to get Ronaldo, a left wing, Blue Modric, Blue Cruz, Blue Ramos, Blue Marcelo. Have that on the left side. I then want Hazard at striker. My player of the month one is fine. Uh, I want the uh, the informed Willian at right forward. Fernandinho uh, SBC card at centre mid. Bellerin at right back. Smalling at centre back. De Gea in nets. That right now is kind of like the dream team for me where I'm aiming to get. Uh, I don't know how much they're going to cost. I don't know. Like, you know, I, like the Modric, for example, could be 600k, 700k. We can afford that. The Cruz, because his pace is going to be super low, might be three, four hundred k. We can afford that. Uh, the Marcelo, because he's a left back, might be you know say four, five hundred k. We can afford that. Uh, Ramos, I probably think, would be up there about a million coins, but we can afford that. Like we'll be able to afford a lot of the players. It's just going to be the attackers that are going to be the issue that, that we're going to struggle to get, unless, unless of course we get super lucky in packs and pack one. Um, I'm going to be saving my rewards this weekend. I, I get one one hundred k pack and one premium team of the week pack. I'll be saving the Premium Team of the Week pack for a good Team of the Week. Um, I, I don't particularly like to save them, but I think this Team of the Week is going to be specifically bad. Um, the 100k pack I'll be saving until the entire Team of the Year is in packs. And um, hopefully, we, you know, I've got one, one 100k pack. Hopefully I get lucky. Uh, again, one of the main reasons why I, got the, I went for Elite 2 instead of just stopping at Gold 1 was because I got 100,000 coins now instead of 50,000 coins. So there's 50k... Um, bank straight away and I get the inform pack over the 100k pack now whilst I can get some good stuff in the 100k pack I can also get trash in the 100k pack um, but the inform pack I'm guaranteed at least say like 40 to 50k because of how cheap the uh, you know even if I got like the ultimate three worst informs I'd still get 12 to 13k for each of them so like 40k so with the extra 50k coins and the guaranteed 40k I've basically made the 100,000 coins there um, assuming I had a bad 100k pack. Of course, if I have a 100k pack like last week, where I got that Inform Lukaku, by the way, very clever of me to sell when I sold. I, I kind of had a feeling Informs this week will go down in price for the simple reason that we saw in the code that the uh, Team of the Week packs were coming back. Team of the Week 16 and Team of the Week 17. We're in Team of the Week 16 now, so I knew that Willian and Lukaku, etc., would get um, an abundance of them in just in the game, right? I knew it would happen. So I sold the Lukaku for what, 400,000 coins. He is currently selling for 263,000 coins. So I made the right decision there. And I bought Willian for 270 or so. And I sold Willian for 320 or 330. And he's now 220. So I sold Willian with the intention, as I explained this in the video before, with the sole intention of buying him back when, he, uh, when his price goes down. And I think over the next two days, his price will continue to go down and he'll probably go down to around 150 to 160K, which is where I'll be happy picking him up, um, assuming that I'm well away from getting a blue card. If I'm only like a few hundred thousand coins away from getting a blue card, I won't spend that money. I'd rather keep Walcott, use Sterling, use any of the immense amount of right forwards I've got um, in, in this game. But uh, that's where we're at. Now, to the, to the comments, guys, to the comments. The first comment we've got it's from Mytik. He says, uh, you should use attribute cards. Going back to what we were talking about in yesterday's video about the uh, the attribute cards on the players that we're using. 
Um, I think just everybody agreed that hey, attribute cards are there. You know, they're there. Uh, you know, again, I was using bronze ones. It's not like I had full squad attribute cards on the full, you know the plus tens all round with the coaches to give plus fifteens. Um, I'm, I'm getting them out of bronze packs. It's not like I'm going out of my way to buy them to, to piss people off. I'm just I'm just using the ones that are getting packed. So I think that had a lot of thumbs up. So. Uh, yeah, we'll use them. We also get one from Anton Lund. I always seem to see your messages, Anton. He says, Hi, Nep. Do you prefer playing on a big TV? Uh, I play on a 20, a 32 inch right now, I believe. I've played on bigger TVs and I hate it. The motion lag that you get from playing not only makes me feel physically sick, but makes the gameplay really laggy. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm looking to get a 22 inch, I think, or 23 inch, or whatever, 24 inch, whatever the low one is, up below a 27, because that's what like the pros and basin and then play on. And they believe that I would play better um, with a bit of a smaller smaller TV. So I am going to downgrade a monitor uh, just for one weekend league and test it out and see if I play any better. If I do, I'll stick to that. If not, I'll stick to my 32 inch, um, which shouldn't be a problem. He also says, do you like the Xbox controller or the PS controller? I, don't, I, like, I have no preference. They, they both have pros and cons. Um, if, if somebody said, like, just pick one, you know, if somebody gave you, like, a neutral console and said, which one do you want to take? I, I would literally just close my eyes and pick one up and that would be the one that I would use because it doesn't really phase me. And then he says, love from Sweden. Well, thank you very much, Anton. Um, the Elusive Duck says, who is the best, Walcott or Willian? Thinking of buying one to play striker. For playing striker, um, my initial instinct is Walcott, uh, especially if you're getting the informed one because he's got great physical, incredible pace, good dribbling and shooting. Um, he's only three star, three star though. So if you do like four star, um, you know, four star skill moves, Willian Jadud, four star skill moves, four star weak foot, very fast, great dribbling, good shooting, not quite as good as Walcott's. Um, but the, the difference is Willian has high, high work rates. A lot of people struggle with high, high work rate strikers. So again, I would say on that, on that note, probably uh, Theo Walcott is probably the dude that you're going to want to go with. John Tackman says, Nep, should I buy the players I want now or after the team of the year? Because I sold everything and I don't have any good players to play with. Um, now is as good a time as any, dude. Like, player prices are plummeting. It's, it's best to buy players during lightning rounds or just after lightning rounds. Because people are just trying to sell everything, man. They list them up on open bid. You can buy players that usually go for 10k for like 2k on open bid. Because people are just not even paying attention to what's happening. Um, it, it, it just depends on you, dude. I, I, it's, it's hard for me to tell you how the market's going to react. Because EA are doing so many different things this year that they've never done in previous years that um, I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know the answer to your question. Uh, I don't know if your, the players that you sold are going to be at their cheapest today, tomorrow, on Thursday, next Monday. I, I just don't know. Um, so what I would say is do it when you feel it's right. When you feel like you're buying them back at, 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 at a price that you're happy to pay for them, that's when I'd say go and do it. Don't wait around. Like I, I, When um, this Team of the Week dropped, because of the Team of the Week 15 packs where you could get those uh, tradable informs that are available to any weekend, I, uh, at 6pm I was looking at Grey, the, the striker card, right? And he was going for like 50k. And uh, because everyone just opened those packs straight away, those guaranteed informs, loads of them on the market, flooded the market. And I was looking at him going, wow, 50k for this dude. He's basically Jamie Vardy. Like, this is, this, is, this is good. Do you know what I mean? Like, we could get him. Marshall and Bateson in my ear, like, oh no, I don't know, like, he's low rated. We still got the, um, you know, Foot Champs rewards were due to come out that same day. Just wait, he might go down a bit more. So I waited. An hour later, he's worth 150k. And I could have just bought one or two of him, could have made an absolute crap ton. I didn't trust my instinct, and I ended up not making a crap ton of money. Um, so, I, you know, I would say trust your instinct. If your instinct says, you know, I, I bought, um, let's say you bought Mares for 20k. Or you sold Mares for 20k and now he's like 13k and you're thinking, wouldn't mind Mares back in my team. Go and buy him. Just go and buy him. Just go and get him back. Accept that 7k profit, the profit margin that you take and go nuts. Harry Lee says, is Inform Grey any good? I haven't used Inform Grey, uh, but on the note of him, he's actually now back down to 50k because of these uh, SBCs that are in, uh, in the game right now. The, this team of the week and the next team of the week are going to be absolutely worthless and probably the one after as well because a load of people are going to save a load of those packs again. Um... So uh, I haven't used him. From what I've seen from people that have used him, he's very good. He does look like a player I would love to try, but I have so many attackers in my team um, and so many great attackers that I don't need to try another attacker. You know, for me, Son, Hazard, Walcott, Sterling, Depay, Bolassi, uh, Firmino, uh, Lacazette, when I bring him on as a sub, just all incredible. 
you know, like for me, the area that I'm really looking to strengthen is is like the centre midfield area, if possible, because my midfield is really good, and the left back area really. Like no no one else really needs to be changed. So I wouldn't mind trying Gray, and if I can maybe pick one up for like 35, 30k or so, if he goes down that low, I'll pick him up just because of how good he looks. But based on my feeling of what's going on here in uh, Team of the Year, a lot of the players that I've got now are going to be players that I'm not going to have in the future. Fernandinho, Emery Chan, probably even Costa, uh, Son, Sterling, Walcott, I'm just... By the time something much, much better comes around, I will get rid of them. And you probably think, well, nothing really better is going to come around. But EA have done a lot of promotions already this year. A lot of SBCs, a lot of special cards. You know, the Screamer cards, the Movember cards. Like, they're showing that they're, they're putting out a lot into the market. With Team of the Year, I, I don't... I want to basically... I want to stop wasting my coins and, and wasting things. So, I will probably play with the team that I've got now. Give or take a player here or there. A lot until I can afford the best players in the game. Because I don't want to move up to like an 84 or from an 84 to an 87, not really like it, go back to the 84, then try an 89 and not really like him and go back to the 84 because I end up just losing coins on coins on coins. You know, we did it with Ramos, we did it with Alba. That inform Alba, we bought him for like 290, I sold him for like 220. Lost out, God knows how, like 15k on tax and 70k on um, depreciation. So I lost like almost 90,000 coins on that Alba and I played like 20 games with him, man. Like, just an absolute waste. Even the Leighton Baines. And the, um, the uh, uh, what's his name, um, James Milner that I bought, I bought Baines for about 85,000 coins and he's now 50,000 coins. And I bought uh, Milner, I think, for 90,000 coins and he's now 45,000 coins. So I've lost a lot of coins on those two dudes as well. Again, super frustrating. Baines I'm using and I'm enjoying. He's no better nor worse than Clichy. He's good, he's very good. Uh, but Clichy did the same job for me, so uh, ultimately, that I, I should have sold. I should have sold Baines after the weekend league finish. I should have sold him. I got lazy. I didn't go on my account on Monday. Um, you know, team of the year dropped because I was preparing for team of the year. Team of the year ended up dropping too late, and now I've missed my boat. And ho hopefully, um, after they're out of packs, hopefully then their price will maybe stabilise and go up a little bit and go back to like maybe the 60s or 70k's where I'll be able to sell them. I also held on to Casper Schmeichel when I could have sold him for 80k and I believe he's now down at like um, like 40k or less. Yeah, he's 35k for Casper Schmeichel. So I've got 100k in those three informs that I could have sold for 250k literally like 12 hours ago. So that's another 150,000 coins lost basically on my, you know, I've, I've, I've been managing my coins so badly um, over the last four or five weeks Due to the team, due to the team of the year and the Christmas promotions, and uh, I basically don't want to do that anymore. So um, I don't want to like buy Gray to try Gray, to only use him for ten games to then sell him for a loss and a tax loss, and think, well, what was the point of that? I've just put myself even further behind in trying to get a 99, 98 uh, attacker team of the year player. You know, um, so uh, so there is that. Uh, next comment is from Quack Quack Duck. Why? What? says, why are attribute cards considered to be morally incorrect but chemistry styles aren't? And the reason why I'm going to talk about this is because a lot of people actually ask this question and I think the, the, like a lot of people are confused uh, as to the difference. Chemistry is in the game for everyone regardless of whether you want it or not. You can go out of your way to purposely not get chemistry, but if you build a full chem team, you get the boosts of chemistry no matter what. Even if you don't apply a chemistry style, you still get a boost on chemistry. It gives you... The, you basically like... You get 90 in-game attributes, or a maximum of 90 in-game attributes boost boosted to each player as a maximum, based on your individual and team chemistry. Um, and that is, even if you have a basic chem style, it just spreads the 90 attributes differently. A chem style just diverts those attributes to a specific area of the, of the player. So, um, with that in mind, by the way, this game, I, I, I got a man sent off early, horrendous tackle, fair play. Um, I gave away a penalty, I saved the penalty, and this is what the first game where De Gea just pulled off mental save after mental save, and I ended up going down in the 88th minute and winning the game completely undeservedly. Um, but hey, you've got to get a bit of luck sometimes in foot champs if you want to get to elite, right? Um, so basically, chemistry styles are an, uh, are an attribute diversion, uh, and, a, and, and they're available to everyone on every occasion without fail. Um, you know, it's, it's not like you're saying, oh my god, like, how come how come he gets to use a player on 10 chemistry and I can't? You can. Like, there's no, absolutely nothing stopping you other than you not building a team correctly. 
Whereas chemistry, whereas attribute cards further boost um, attributes. So you can have someone, so, you know, someone with 70 pace can get 82 pace with a chem style, but then they don't get the stats in other areas. Whereas you can also apply an, an attribute card to them and put them up to like 95 pace or 99 pace or something, you know. So it's, it's basically like enhanced attributes that shouldn't be on the card, I guess. But they're in the game, you know, so that's kind of EA's fault. Cass Shaven says, Hi Nepenthes, what are your thoughts on the team of the year? I totally disagree on Suarez, Cruz and PK being in there. I feel like Griezmann, Canty and Bonucci should be in there instead of them. They call it team of the year, they should call it Real Barca team of the year. I would like to hear your thoughts on this. Keep up the good work, love from Netherlands. Uh, well, I appreciate the kind words, dude. Um, I disagree with Suarez. I think Suarez deserves to be in there. I think he's definitely been one of the best players in the world this year. Um, I, I like Cruz, yeah. I agree. Uh, apparently Pogba actually missed out literally by two votes. If Pogba got two more votes, he would have been in Team of the Year. Bear in mind that the Team of the Year was voted for by professional football players. I think there was like 60 some odd thousand votes altogether. Um, so it was the football players themselves that voted for these players, right? Um, so uh, PK, I don't know. Like I, I, I personally believe Pepe should have been in there instead of PK. And I believe Ramos should have been in there as well. Uh, Cruz is a bit bit here or there. Germany obviously always do good internationally. Cruz done very well with Real Madrid. Um, you know, I, I feel like he deserves to be there. But I feel like, I, I, for some reason, I know Real Madrid won the Champions League. I know Barcelona won La Liga. You know, but as I saw on Twitter, like France uh, got to the well, got to the final of the Euro tournament. Not a single French player in the team, which is crazy considering specifically Kanté won the league with Leicester, of all teams, and had an absolutely momentous season, then did incredibly well in the Euros for France, then took a big money move to a big BPL team to Chelsea, and has done incredibly well in the league, taking Chelsea to the top of the table by a long way. I don't know how Kante missed out. I genuinely don't. Um, I would just like to see in future years like more players be considered because it seems like the pros just love the like you know love the Barcelona Real Madrid or you know La Liga kind of uh, section of players. Um, I know Dani Alves got in there as well, and it's, it seems like Dani Alves got in there for his time at Barcelona rather than what he's done at Juventus. So I I just I do it because otherwise why didn't but you know Buffon get in there why didn't Bonucci get in there why didn't Chiellini get in there you know what how did Vidal miss out Vidal won so many trophies with Bayern he won the Copa America with Chile how is Vidal not in team of the year you know why isn't he getting a look in and ultimately the sad truth of team of the year is although it is semi like semi relevant to skill because you can't deny the players in there are world class players right you literally can't deny that the biggest problem is it is 100 not 100% but it is a, a high-end popularity contest it, it truly is which is the saddest part uh, you know and because of that you will continually see the same faces until they either retire or until the club that they're with have a truly shocking season to the point where they can't possibly be considered to be in the team uh, you know if Real Madrid absolutely shit the bed this season which they're not because they're top of the table um, you, you could be like, okay, well, maybe this year we won't see Modric and we won't see Cruz and we won't see Ramos or Marcelo. But yeah, I don't know, man. I, we see the same faces a lot and it would be nice to see a change. Chris Cassidy says, hey, Nep, what movie are you most looking forward to this year? I am looking forward to the Transformers movie. Mazen Ahmed says, what is the best formation? 4-3-2-1 or 4-3-1-2? I love the 4-3-2-1 uh, formation. It's, it's definitely been the best for me this year. Quite a lot of these games that you're watching me play in right now, I switched to the 4-1-2-1-2. Right now... As you guys know, I'm really trying to uh, focus on what goes wrong in my games so I can work on it and, and become a better FIFA player, right? So there were a few games where I was struggling in certain areas, so I thought, let me try switching up to the 4-1-2-1-2 and see if this has an effect on me. Fortunately for me, it did. I managed to grind my way through from 27, no, 23-7 and 7 to 32-8. and 8. So nine-game win streak. Uh, you know, we went 8-2 and two in our first uh, 10 games. We went 7-3 and three in our second 10 games. I believe we went seven and three in our yeah we went seven and three in our um, next set of ten games and then nine and one in our final set of ten games. So eight and two is where I want to be because eight and two gets you to uh, gets you to thirty two wins if you do eight and two four times in the forty games. But instead of me going eight and two seven and three seven and three nine and one, 
Did I do that? No, I, w I would have gone eight and two, seven and three, eight and two, nine and one. That's what I would have done. Instead of doing that, I want to get rid of that seven and three and turn that into another nine and one. So I want to do like eight and two, nine and one, eight and two, nine and one, because then that's 34 wins. I feel like I'm, I'm nearly at that level. I'm so close to being at that level. And it feels good to be able to you know, say that, hey, I might be able to start getting Elite One every week. Imagine if I got Elite One every week, guys. 125,000 coins, two premium Team of the Week packs, two 100K packs. We would get towards those Team of the Years like that, man. No problem. Um, just for the last comment, Jay Downey says he's bronze bent, so you know he's done something to give himself a huge boost. I thought you didn't believe in that shit. Haha, <laughs> great one, mate. And obviously he's been a bit sarcastic for, for a, 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 you know, seemingly no reason. I, I don't mind when people challenge me. I'm, I'm happy to debate with you things, but you don't have to be a dick to me whilst trying to make your point. You know, you, you can just be, you could just ask the simple question like, how come you feel like this when you say this, rather than being a dick? Uh, Jay Lawrence actually replied to this guy and said, uh, yeah, but the point is the pro player thinks that handicap is a thing, so he's bronze bench. Surely that's a tactic what Neff is aging, uh, aging. And I guess what he's trying to say, which is what, what I feel like, if bron I don't believe bronze benching exists, but this pro clearly does. So he's doing something to give himself a, a boost. He's doing something to give himself a benefit in the game because he is reducing his team rating so that he doesn't get handicapped because of how good his main team is. So that, like, that's... I don't believe in it, but he clearly believes in it. And the fact that he bronze bench means that he's trying to give himself an artificial boost, not through skill, but through manipulation of potential sliders or handicap or whatever you know he may think is in the game. And I, I added an attribute card. So again, they're entirely different things. And again, you, like, you don't have to be a dick when you ask your question. Like You could, you could just be a normal person. Um, Connor Real Muto says, Net we buy Marcelo or Danny Alves if under 500k. I really hope they're around that price so I can play them at striker and foot champs to see how they do. Uh, yeah, I probably would, dude. If, as, if, if the defenders and midfielders that I want are reasonably priced, I will probably go for them. Uh, you know, Marcelo last year got down to like in the 200k's. I don't think it'll be that cheap this year because of how much foot champs is offering in terms of rewards. But if it goes down to like the three, four, 500k mark, there's every uh, every opportunity for me to definitely pick him up. Even if like, I could even fit him into this team on 8 chem and put Fernandinho at that left hand side, and boom, I've got myself an 8 chem left back who's one of the best left backs the game is ever going to see. Four star skill moves, four star weak foot on 8 chem. He's going to get incredible boost anyway. I'm looking forward to having Marcelo in my team or Danny Alves alternatively because I can use you know Fernandinho on the right and Danny Alves there as well. <laughs> But anyway, guys, that is going to be the end for today. We have run out of time. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.